So Apple usually has an October event. Last year they had the October spooky event, which was the day before Halloween or the day of Halloween. And it was a night event and they released a couple of Mac products. But this year they went a little bit different route and they released products on a Monday, a Tuesday and a Wednesday, all in press releases with a mini video that looked like something that you would see from that of an Apple keynote. So the first thing I wanna to touch on is the 2024 M4 iMac. Finally, they upgraded the iMac. It had the M1 chip and now we're just gonna see it with the M4 chip. And what does this chip do? Well, it does what you'd guess any Apple silicone chip would do. It'd make it extremely faster from the jump from M1 to M4. And we're talking a good amount faster, about 30% faster than the previous chip just in every day workflow. So what is the 2024 iMac? Well, as we know what the iMac is, it's a 24 inch 4.5K retina display monitor. And the monitor is pretty similar to the previous one. You get what you think you would get, sharp, colorful, comfortable to the eye views, and that retina display that we all have gotten familiar with and love with Apple. But what they do give you is nano texture display as an option. So when you're typing and you see the reflections off of the screen, you have the option to opt into the nano display version so you can get rid of a lot of those distractions. 12 megapixel center stage. We all know what that is. We've seen on the iPads, we've seen on the MacBooks. We have center stage as an option. So when you move around, the camera kind of crops you in and moves you around with where you're going on the screen. Makes FaceTiming, Zooming, Microsoft Teams, a lot more intuitive and almost personal in a way. And then the M4 chip, that's the main update with this thing as the body of the computer stayed a lot the same, a couple of new colors, and we do have USB-C with the mouse and the keyboard, but the mouse still has it on the bottom. Still, in my opinion, the worst product ever made. I absolutely hate the Magic Mouse and I will stick by that forever. But the M4 chip is the main thing and what we're getting is just a powerhouse of a chip in an everyday computer. And then as we know, the color matching accessories, going back to the accessories, you get a purple iMac, you get a purple keyboard and you get a purple mouse. And that goes for all the colors across the board, green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, blue, and silver. All right, now we can talk about what the real update was in this three days of Macs in October. The Mac mini has played a role as being like a company computer or a company wide computer that lives in server rooms and got quite a bit of a refresh and not just a refresh in the inside of the computer, but a refresh on the outside of the computer. For one, the inside, it comes with the M4 and it has the option of the M4 Pro chip. So you have a lot of power in it. But where it gets really interesting is the outside of it. And it just got a good amount smaller, almost half smaller, almost half as much smaller, almost half the size of the original Mac mini. And it looks more like a mini Apple studio. It offers USB-C ports on the front and Thunderbolt on the back. The power button is on the bottom though, which is very interesting. And you know, just one of those, what are we doing Apple types of choices, but it is a power button, something you don't use very often. And when you do, it's just gonna be located on the bottom now. Now, when we get into this, this is like a CPU. This is just a computer. You don't get a screen with it. You have to buy a screen separately. But what this has the ability to do is connect up to three monitor screens at once. With this computer being so small, it packs a lot of power. And with this computer being something that you'd find in a lot of server rooms, you do have a lot of options. You have the M4 model, which is a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, up to 32 gigabytes of unified memory, up to two terabytes of storage, three Thunderbolt 4, and two USB-C ports. And this thing starts at 599, which is extremely cheap. That was probably the most shocking thing to me was how cheap this computer comes in at. And then the M4 Pro models, you have a 14 core CPU and a 20 core GPU, up to 64 gigabytes of unified memory, up to eight terabytes of storage, three Thunderbolt 5 ports and two USB-C ports. So this is one of the first times we're seeing Thunderbolt 5, but this one starts at $1,400. So quite a bit cheaper, almost a little bit more than double the price, but you're getting a lot more out of it from power to storage. And then the final thing, if you know me, computer right here, MacBook Pro 16 inch M1 Max. Every year they update it. Every year it's a little update every single year. And this is the year of the M4 MacBook Pro that comes in the M4 chip, the M4 Pro chip, and the M4 Max chip. 
But what this computer gives you the option of that it hasn't in the past is that nano texture screen. And like I said earlier, what it does is it reduces glare and reduces reflections. And what that gives you is higher nits of brightness when you're looking at your regular content or your HDR content, up to a thousand nits for regular and 1600 nits for HDR content. This does also give you the new 12 megapixel center stage camera. And just like it does, like I said earlier, it just makes screen calls a lot more personal. And just like the Mac mini, Thunderbolt 5 now comes to the Mac and this will be one of the, again, first MacBook Pros with the Thunderbolt 5 speed capabilities. But this MacBook's just like the other one. You have your HDMI port that can connect up to an 8K screen. You have your SD card slot, which is another big thing that they added back to the MacBook over with years of not having it. MagSafe 3, again, MagSafe, another addition that they added back a few years back to move you away from that USB-C as being really the standard. And then headphone jack and you do get Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3, which are both updated for that of the M4 MacBook Pro. And maybe the most important thing that comes on this MacBook Pro that comes on all the other Macs I talked about today and anything really with an Apple Silicon chip before it and an M chip is Apple Intelligence. Apple Intelligence is a beta I've had on my phone for a little bit of time now, and I guess it's not the beta anymore, but I do have the beta with some other versions of stuff that's not out. But what I've learned from Apple Intelligence is, is Apple kept their promise. This stuff is slowly being rolled out, and it's slowly being rolled out, and it's most importantly working, which everyone was really worried about was with the promise of AI and a lot of companies and how they promise AI, Apple came through with their promise and we're starting to see it work. And it's starting to become something where I use it. I only have it on my phone right now, is starting to become something where I use it on my phone and there's special tasks I only want to do on my phone because I don't have it on my iPad and I don't have it on my laptop yet. So Apple Intelligence and specifically the improved Siri and the writing tools are some stuff that I'm really excited to get my hands on across all of my devices. So with three Macs coming in October, the real question is, is should you upgrade? If you don't have an Apple Silicon chip MacBook, I mean, you should upgrade to something even if it's an M1 or an M2. I recommend going and looking for an M2 or an M3 and specking that thing out. They are very, very, very similar when it comes to all things speed and really what they do. As far as the Mac Mini, I mean, I recommend getting that. You're getting a lot smaller of a unit and it does come with quite a bit of features that the previous one did not have. And same with the iMac, going from M1 to M4 is a huge, huge jump. But with that, let me know down in the comments below if you're picking up either the iMac, the Mac Mini, or the new MacBook Pros, and which one you're getting, how you're configuring it out, because I, I wanna know. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We are chasing numbers right now with the subscribers, and it's all because of you guys, so join that journey. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.